I apologize to the government house leader, but it is now time for member statements. And I recognize the member for Windsor to come soon. Thank, thank you, Speaker. Uh, Remembrance Day or Remembrance Week. Remembrance Week of 2023 in Windsor Tecumseh was truly one for the books, and I'm privileged to have joined incredible ceremonies across my riding. And Windsor, when Windsor Essex honours its veterans, it does it right. Each of the three Royal Canadian Legions in my riding, Branch 255 Riverside, Colonel Paul Poisson, Branch 261 Tecumseh, and Metropolitan Branch 594 Old Castle, each hosted neighbourhood commemorations of a truly unique character. All of the legions and our veterans and the public come together on Remembrance Day at the Essex County War Memorial in downtown Windsor at a beautiful ceremony organized by the Windsor Veterans Memorial Services Committee. And since 1926, so 97 years now, the committee has set out to support our local veterans and their families. Under the leadership of Paul Lozon, the committee works hard all year by presenting 11 memorial events across Windsor. These recognize our fallen veterans in the battles in which our local veterans have fought. fought. World War I, the Battle of the Atlantic, the Vietnam War, the Korean War, our peacekeeping and NATO missions, Dieppe, the Merchant Navy, Afghanistan, and the Battle of Britain. To the Windsor Veterans Memorial Services Committee and our local groups like the Northwall Riders, Association of Military Motorcyclists of Canada, and the Southern Ontario Military Musters supporting every single time, Thank you for your service to Windsor Essex veterans and keeping their legacy alive and strong. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Toronto Danforth. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I appreciate the opportunity. As you're well aware, Speaker, we face a crisis around the climate. We have wildfires in Canada that are unprecedented. We've seen them around the world: flooding, droughts, disruption of food supplies problems that are profound and are scheduled or expected to become far deeper. At the same time, we have a government that is ramping up the production of gas-fired electricity. Uh, it's undermining the work that was done over a decade ago to reduce emissions from our electricity sector. And frankly, Speaker, they're setting things up for electricity to be more expensive to be produced. That's a simple reality. And we know that just recently, $4.8 million was offered to Napanee to host a gas plant. We know that these gas plants will increase air pollution, cause health problems, and deepen the climate crisis. Royal Bank of Canada, the Electricity Distributors Association of Ontario, have both said that there is a cheaper, non-burning option to address this issue. That's been ignored by this government. Speaker, I call on the government to abandon its investment in expansion of gas plants, take the solutions offered by the Royal Bank and by the electricity distributors, put money in the hands of homeowners and businesses across Ontario to cut their energy use and cut their energy bills. The direction the government is going is disastrous. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. Member for Lanark, Frontenac, Kingston. Thank you, Speaker. Yesterday, November 15th, was World Chronic Obstructive Pulmonary Disease Awareness Day. COPD is a serious and progressive respiratory disease. It's estimated that by 2030, COPD will be the third leading cause of death in the world. Mr. Speaker, in 21, this government introduced and passed an act to proclaim COPD Awareness Day to help raise awareness. The Ministry of Health has taken significant action on COPD caring, including increasing access to smoking cessation programs for patients in both the hospital and primary care setting, including patients with COPD, increasing access to influenza and pneumonical vaccines among COPD patients, and investing in early detection and treatment to slow the progression of this extremely serious lung disease. One of these vital investments has been the Best Care and Primary Care Program, a highly effective, made in Ontario, team-based, patient-centered care model. Demonstrated in peer-reviewed studies, best care in primary care has saved our health system millions of dollars, alleviated pressures on capacity, and improved the quality of care for Ontarians living with COPD. Best care has already proven its effectiveness in 200 locations in southwestern Ontario and has been looking at expansion in other regions in the province. Our government will continue to work 
with health providers, health teams, and patients to continue to enhance initiatives like Best Care and improve the lives of those living with COPD. I'd like to do a shout out to Dr. Christopher Litsky, Dr. Kathy Fodes, and my friend Christina Dogowitz for all their great work to help the people with COPD in this province. Thank you very much. Member statements. The member for Nickel Belt. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Ian Watson from my riding came and talked to me. He's a cancer survivor living with the long-term side effect of radiation treatment for lymphoma, which means that he frequently needs dental procedures. Ian was notified earlier this year that he is no longer eligible for the Ontario Senior Dental Care Plan because his 2022 income exceeded $22,200 by a few dollars. He's not the only one, Speaker. Gail, net income is $22,203. Therefore, she also received a letter telling her that she no longer qualifies for the dental support. She needs dental services, and at $22,000, she can't afford this. And like the seniors' co-payment, program, which is based on yearly income after deduction, the dental plan is based on income before deduction. Ian is asking why this provincial government applies a different interpretation of net income for one program versus the other. But what thousands of seniors are asking is why is this government making it so difficult for low-income seniors to access basic dental care? Why is the eligibility income set so low? I suppose, Speaker, that the government has left enough patient in pain that we will have to wait for the federal government to clean up their mess. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for Cambridge. Thank you, Speaker. This morning, I want to share my experience of spending Remembrance Day with members of the Preston Legion. With uh, two legions and three cenotaphs in my riding, it was my first opportunity as a member of parliament to spend November 11th with the good people of Branch 126. We began with a Remembrance Day with a sol solemn march from the Legion to the Cenotaph on King Street, where citizens young and old laid wreaths to honor our country's veterans. What was special about the march to the Cenotaph this year was along the way on every light pole hung a banner featuring photographs and names of veterans. The banner program was open to all present, excuse me, Preston uh, residents who wanted to honor a veteran who is either living or, or passed on. A total of 66 banners were on display and they served as an important reminder of the sacrifices of veterans who have served and continue to serve our great country. The Banner Program is a great way to pay tribute to our veterans, and I encourage all legions in Ontario to do the same. Finally, I ended my day with a dinner at the Preston Legion, which I had the opportunity to meet uh, many veterans who graciously shared their personal experiences with me. I was grateful to hear their stories and look forward to hearing many more. Nice. Thank you. Member Statements, the member for Ottawa West, Nepean. Thank you, Speaker. Ottawa residents are experiencing significant hurdles to accessing health care. Too many of them don't have a family doctor, just like 2.2 million people across Ontario. Hospital wait times are excessive and surgical backlogs are lengthy. In fact, some patients are waiting twice as long as the provincial average to receive life-saving surgeries. At the Ottawa Hospital, only 13% of breast cancer patients are making it to the operating room within the targeted time. But instead of tackling these challenges, the government is funneling public health care dollars into the pockets of private investors. <laughs> this week, we learned that the government is paying a private for-profit for surgical clinic fees that are three to four times what is provided to public hospitals for the same surgeries. And all the while, operating rooms are sitting unused in public hospitals because hospitals don't have the funding and the staff to make full use of them. Vacancies for health care staff in Ontario are up 19% since last year. Yet this government continues to treat health care workers with disrespect, appealing the court's decision on Bill 124. Thousands of unfilled positions mean thousands of patients will wait indefinitely for treatment. And sometimes that treatment never comes. 
In 2022 alone, 11,000 Ontarians died while on waiting lists for medical services. This government needs to start putting the health of people ahead of profits so that everyone in Ontario can access the health care they deserve. Thank you. Member statements. Next, we have the member for Scarborough Centre. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to address a matter of utmost importance. Lung Cancer Awareness Month. Lung cancer is a disease that affects <coughs> millions of lives in Canada and around the world. Lung cancer is a formidable adversary and its impact on individuals, family and community is profound, affecting people of all ages, background and walks of life. The statistics are stark and the reality is sobering. Lung cancer remains the leading cause of cancer-related death in Canada, claiming more lives than breast, colon, and prostate cancer combined. Canadian Cancer Society estimate that in 2023, 85 Canadians on average will be diagnosed with lung and bronchitis cancer every day, while 56 Canadians will die from lung and bronchitis cancer. The purpose of Lung Cancer Awareness Month is not only to acknowledge the gravity of the situation, but to highlight the collective effort needed to collaborate and educate in commitment to foster a world where lung cancer is not a death sentence. I'd like to thank our government under the leadership of Premier Ford for investing free lung cancer screening programs and more to help combat this disease. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Member Statements, the member for Beaches East York. Good morning, everyone. It's always a pleasure to be in the chamber with you. In the heart of Kingston Road Village in beautiful Beaches East York sits Lawler Pharmasafe, a mainstay of the neighbourhood with pharmacist and owner Kiro Massey and his team working tirelessly to keep our community safe and healthy. After administering thousands of vaccines over the past year, few years, Cairo has, was forced to make the tough decision to conclude vaccine season months early and possibly for all future seasons for publicly funded vaccines. Why, Mr. Speaker? Because this year, the Ministry of Health appointed Shoppers Drug Mart, a private retailer as the sole distributor of publicly funded vaccines. Imagine Kiro's surprise when he put in orders of 200 vaccine doses to only have 20 doses delivered. They're turning away 50 to 60 people a day, Mr. Speaker. Lawler Pharmacy has saved countless lives through their vaccination efforts. However, with a distribution plan that resembles sabotage, they simply cannot provide this service while safely dispensing medications. My residents are at risk because this government wants to cater to their wealthy friends and major corporations instead of small businesses that provide personal care to Ontarians. This kind of governance kills. Kiro is a phenomenal pharmacist who knows the needs of his patients. He deals, deals like this prevent healthcare workers like him from saving lives. Thank you, Kiro, and his entire team at Lawler Pharmacy for your hard work and care to keep our community healthy. Thank you. The next member statement, member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Speaker, I care about the well-being of our seniors, but I also care about our youth, as they are the foundation of our future. I rise to share my gratitude for the work of Across You Hub, a beacon of empowering empowerment for our young community. They work with new immigrants youth, help them to integrate into Canada and overcome the cultural barriers. Established in 2002, Across, Across You Hub has provided over 1,800 programs impacting almost 87,000 participants, both kids and parents. Last Sunday, I attended their fundraising and youth award gala, an event that celebrated not just achievements, 
but the resilience of our future leaders. The I Believe You Can Awards were presented to five recipients and simplifying the spirit of growth, building, and bridging. The perseverance, courage, determination, and perseverance of the dreams have earned them the awards. Let us continue to support the initiatives that invest in our youth, ensuring a brighter and more resilient future for Ontario. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. The next member statement, the member for Hastings, Lennox and Addington. Thank you very much, Speaker. <laughs> Speaker, I'll ask you to picture this, a beautiful white and green-sided gable house on the shores of Lake Ontario, along the historic Loyalist Parkway, and in the, nestled in the cute port village of Bath, stands the Fairfield Goodside House. This home, built by United Empire Loyalists William and Benjamin Fairfield in 1796, oh, wow. went through many generations of both Fairfields and others before its final family owner, Mabel Fairfield Goodside, who bought the home in 1938 with her husband, Dr. William Goodside. Then in 1968, Mabel's estate passed the entire home and its heritage artifacts to be a museum to be shared with the community. It is currently owned by the aptly named Loyalist Township, and the treasures herein are greatly appreciated. Speaker, this home has seen and carries treasures from before the War of 1812, has witnessed the birth of our nation in this province, and even hosted a Sir John A. Macdonald uh, for a picnic once. But like all things, time has had an impact on this beautiful home. So, Speaker, I recently had the pleasure to attend the kickoff event as Loyalist Township begins to restore the home with funding from the Ontario Trillium Foundation. I'm grateful to see the heritage sites like this get the funding to keep the history of this province alive. I'm thankful to the OTF, the ministry, and this government. Thank you very much, Speaker. No. Thank you very much. That concludes our member statements for this morning. I beg to inform